welcome back to the Pop Culture Lens. We are on another Pop Culture Pilgrimage on our YouTube site here. Today we are in Washington, D.C., capital of, of course, the United States. And we're here at one of the locations for probably one of the most famous horror movies of all time, The Exorcist from 1973. This location, 3600 Prospect Street, served as the home for the McNeil family, for Chris and Reagan. And what they had to do for this house, though, is they had to actually add a fake wing onto the side. So over on the side here, there is no like jutting out wing from it, but they put one in so that Reagan's bedroom could be in that wing, and it would then be logical for someone to fall out of Reagan's bedroom onto the steps, which we're about to show you are actually right next door to this. There's no movie magic here except for creating that fake wing. You also do not see the lamppost that we see when Father Merrick comes to actually do the exorcism, which is interesting. But this is the actual house then for the exorcist. We are at the famous steps from the exorcist so famous that there's actually a plaque way down at the bottom of these steps and these steps also appear on google's map when you check for the exorcist steps now there are 75 steps here and i'm not walking down all of them for you but you they feature prominently in the movie because first Dennings was thrown out of them when we first started suspecting that Reagan was possessed, but more famously, Father Karras was tossed, actually he threw himself out, sorry, spoiler, of the window when he took the demon from Reagan. And the way that they filmed it was they had a stuntman, of course, so that Jason Miller didn't have to do the stunt on his own. They also padded these steps with an inch and a half of rubber so that it wouldn't hurt the stuntman quite so much. And interestingly, because we are near Georgetown University, students from that university were actually selling people tickets to watch the production, and it cost about $5 if you wanted to see the stuntman throw himself down the stairs. So here we are, the famous steps from The Exorcist. Alright, here we are on Georgetown University, another prominent place featured in The Exorcist. Behind me you see one of the main entrances to the university. And this is the place where Chris, Ray, Chris McNeil, this is the place where Chris McNeil was filming a movie, because she is of course an actress in the movie. What we know about the movie really is that the scene that they're filming was some type of student protest. And we never really learn much about the movie that she's doing. But there were a lot of student protests going on at the time because this movie was being filmed in the early 1970s. Of course, we had anti-war protests going on. And a lot of movies, pop culture movies, especially intended for the young market, the youth market, 
were focused on these types of upheavals. Also, what's interesting though, is that The Exorcist is based, of course, on a true story. And there was a 2000 movie called Possessed that showed this true story. And in that movie, it also starts with a student protest. So apparently there might have been an actual student protest going on at the time of the original story, which was the 1950s, and that one was about civil rights. Still at Georgetown University, we're now at the Dahlgren Chapel. I hope I'm saying that right, but this is a beautiful Catholic church. It was in this church, supposedly, that a desecrated statue of the Virgin Mary was found after Reagan started to show symptoms of being possessed. It was one of the many manifestations of the possession that finally led Father Karras to go and meet with Chris and with Reagan. Our last stop is here on this pedestrian footbridge. The footbridge doesn't really have a name. It's close to the Key Bridge, which also goes over the canals and the Rock Creek, and then also close to Caddy Alley. Otherwise, it doesn't really have a name. It's at the bottom of 34th Street. You go past M Street and here it is. And at this location then is where Father Karras met Chris when she was freaking out because she did not know what to do with her daughter. She was convinced her daughter was possessed at that point and she needed the good father's help. So this is where they met. So we're still here on Georgetown University, but we wanted to kind of wrap up this episode with some reflections. And Chris, you were just saying some rather fascinating things that we wanted to get on the mic. Well, yeah, uh, being here, I think gives me a whole different perspective on the film. Uh, it was the same thing with uh, our episodes on Before Sunrise and Hellboy and The Third Man. Rewatching those films, having been to the places that were featured in the movies, you know, you get a whole new con connection to the film. You get like a whole different view of where they are because you've not only have you been there, but you, you know, you've touched things and interacted with them and uh, inhabited that space. Um, and so I feel like now if I rewatch The Exorcist, it's going to it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to, you know, I, I bend down and up the stairs now. <laughs> Um, and I know how much it kills my thighs. Uh, so I can only imagine how, how that poor stuntman felt rolling down the steps. Um, and we've been here on Georgetown University. I've been in the chapel that, you know, where the, the, the desecrated uh, Virgin, Mary. Virgin Mary statue was, even though there's no statue there, but it's still, you know, you've been inside of the, the, the space. And it just gives you a whole different, like it, it's, a, it's, it's almost like you're embodying parts of the film now in a lot of ways and, and i just feel like it, it it does something completely different it's going to be a completely different experience now when i watch these movies you know going forward i know when we first got to those steps you look down them and they are just foreboding by themselves um chris walked down them there's no way i was going to do that because they literally look scary. It looks like if you just slip a little bit, you're gonna go down them just like Father Karras did. And they are scary. And what I found really cool though too was the fact that I was hearing a crow while we were over at the Exorcist house and crows feature a lot in exorcism movies. So it was really kind of surreal to hear a crow at that site. But the other thing that's interesting is the extent to which this is just like a neighborhood. There, really is not a lot of movie magic going in in the sense of where the places are like they're not scattered all over Washington DC they're within several blocks of each other so it really does feel like this is where the McNeils lived and this is where they were having their problems and that gives you a whole new perspective on things too yeah and I mean it was different than 
than things like Hellboy or Before mm -hmm. Sunset or whatever, because that was those sites were really spread out throughout the whole city, and so you were, you know, even you know, in the film there was a lot of movie magic going on, especially in like Before Sunrise, because yeah. they go to visit this uh, cemetery that's just way far out of town, <laughs> so far that we decided we didn't want to walk it, but it, they make it seem like they just wandered over there. <laughs> Uh, but here it's, you know, these sites are really this close to each other, you know, like the, the exorcist house is just a few blocks away and this chapel is not too far from the front of the university and, you know, the bridge is not too far away from here. So it, it does really, you know, you see how, just how compressed that space was, uh, even as, you know, they were filming like interiors probably in Hollywood and, yeah, uh, you and know, New York City too. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting to just be able to, within the space of, of an hour, <laughs> go from their house to the steps, to the front of the university, to the chapel, to the bridge. Yeah. So I don't know, it, like I said, it's going to give me a whole different viewpoint when I rewatch this movie. Uh, I actually think I'm going to find it scarier now. Really? Why do you think that? Knowing those stairs mm. and, and this area does have such an old feel to it. And you walk into that chapel and it feels heavy atmosphere. And I think that does, it feels scarier now. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it's, to me, it's a scary movie anyway, and I'm not even a, I'm not a religious person, but it's still, I find it terribly frightening, uh, as a film. Uh, and now just, I don't know, I, being in these spaces, I think, you know, having, like I said, having that embodied experience, I think might make the terror a little more palpable <laughs> in some ways. So opposite reactions. Well, no, I was saying the same thing. Oh, palpable. Uh, palpable. I, I, thought, I thought you meant it would be easier to take then. No, okay, sorry. No, much more. That was my fault. Okay. Much more experienced. Okay. Uh, uh, a much more real experience, yeah. I think. Uh, anyway. <laughs> We're going to wrap up this episode because we've been rambling on oh, far too so long. Warm. It is really warm out, uh, but thankfully the clouds have come out and it's cooled <laughs> off a bit. But thank you, as always, for joining us uh, on the Pop Culture Lens. We always appreciate it. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe to this video. Click the bell or whatever it is that you do <laughs> these days to give us hits, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Just do it. You know, you're all YouTubers, so do it. Uh, but thanks again for, for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>